Most creative professionals save and archive their work at every critical stage of their workflow. This allows for more control and security in case the client decides to go back to former, previously rejected versions. Adobe Creative Cloud applications only recently started offering version control for Photoshop and Illustrator files, and it is currently only available for cloud documents. Join me and find out how SnowTrack can simplify version handling for your graphic design projects. Here we are in SnowTrack. This is the Mac version, but it's also available for PC. And even though it is still currently in beta, I will be able to demonstrate why I love to use it with my creative projects. So you can see here on the left side that I already have three projects added. So we have a magazine cover, we have the web banners, and we also have a leaflet design. These are all projects from my most recent graphic design starter bootcamp, which if you are interested in, you can learn more about from the link in the description below. But just so you can see how you can add projects, I'm going to create also another one. And this is quite funny that SnowTrack already gives a random name to your projects. Like this one is insidious something. I don't even know what that word means, but we can refresh it. Road, distinct, striped, able, <laughs> so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to, of course, just type in the title that I want. So I am going to call this one Project 4. Um, and let's just call this Islands. Now, besides the name, what's most important, of course, is where these files are going to be located. By default, it would be placed inside the documents folder, but I'm going to change that to another location on my computer. And before I create it, I just want to show you there is an additional option here, which lets you store the version database files inside that project directory. Now, by default, what happens is whenever you create a project, the working files that you use for your project can be in one place, but SnowTrack will keep the version history or the version database in a completely separate location. This is a good idea because if everything is in one place, it can get a bit messy. So that's why by default, they are stored separately. But in case you wish to keep them together, there is this option here. So let's just create this project. And if I click on Open in Finder, I see that folder created, and I'm just going to drop a couple of working files in here. So I have a Photoshop and Illustrator file and also an InDesign package. And by coming back to SnowTrack, we can already see that there are some unsaved items here. If I click on Save, it's going to generate the first version of this project. Now here within the files, we can see them the same way as we see it in the Finder. So we have the two files and then the folder for the InDesign package, and we can navigate inside it, go into the Links folder, and then go back up and so on and so forth. Or if I turn this option off here, I can actually see all the files from all the subfolders together. Now, what I love about SnowTrack is that it very clearly indicates what happened in each version. Like here, these little green plus signs means that these items were added in this version. So if I add another file in that folder, SnowTrack will already consider that a new version for the project. So I can say save. And in this version, the only icon that will appear is next to that file that we just added. Now let's say we want to change this file. We can double click on it here and it will open it up straight away in Photoshop. Here I am going to just add maybe an adjustment layer and change the colors around. So let's just use color balance this time. I'm going to make the colors a bit more cooler and greenish, something like that. So let's see before and after. This will be an obvious change, so we will be able to see it on the thumbnail. I'm going to save these changes, and even though it's non-destructive, sometimes I would already go to save as a new file, which would make sure that I can go back and forth easily between the variations. But thanks to SnowTrack, we don't have to do that. So I'm just going to choose save. And if we take a look at SnowTrack, it already recognized that I have some unsaved items, and it will show me that PSD file. And I can either hit save here or maybe continue making some changes and consider all of those as a single new version. So it is important to understand that every time you save within Photoshop, Illustrator or InDesign, it doesn't necessarily have to be a new version within SnowTrack because there you will have control over whenever you think you got to a point which can be considered a new version. So you either come to SnowTrack and hit save here 
to generate that new version. Or you can also use a keyboard shortcut. Command or Control Shift 1 within Adobe Applications will communicate with SnowTrack. And if we jump back there, you can see version 3 has already been created for us. And within this version, that little blue pencil icon indicates that that's the item that was modified. Now let me jump back into Photoshop and maybe add another adjustment layer. This time I'm just going to turn this into black and white and save this again. And then coming back to SnowTrack, I'm going to click on Save to again create a new version. But now if I select this file, I will be able to use these little arrows here to quickly toggle through the previous versions. So I don't have to go through the versions and individually click on that file. It will be able to toggle through it very quickly for me. And the best thing is that if I ever decide to recover a previous state, like the original one in this case, I can just click on this icon here, restore this item, and that will result again in a new version, which I can save. And we got that original version back without losing the other variations. So it is almost like a history within Adobe application that never gets deleted. So we will always be able to go back and see those past versions and even restore them if we decide to. And eventually what you want to do is to start naming your versions to make it easier to remember what you've done in each of them. So for instance, in version four, I can just call this one black and white portrait. Here's a feature that I love in SnowTrack, the project info. Whenever you click on this, it will give you an indication or statistics of the amount of items or files in that project. But even more interesting is that you get this little diagram here, which indicates the proportion of file size for each of the file formats. So I can immediately see that the PSD files are taking up most of the space within this project. And if I hover over that color, it even tells me that they take up 31.25% of the space for the project. And this is where you can really understand what I explained in the beginning, that the location of these files is not the same by default where the version database is stored. And this can be a concern for those who are afraid of running out of space on the computer or hard drives, because of course, having multiple variations means that it's not only a simple duplication of all the files, but the version database eventually will end up being much larger than the project folder. So with only a couple of versions within this project and a single file being changed, I already have 200 megabytes extra space on top of the duplicates that are stored in the version database. So at this point, you might feel a bit discouraged and you feel like there's not much advantage in using SnowTrack, but this is where things get interesting. The coolest feature of SnowTrack has to be the way it handles tracks or branches for projects. So instead of just storing or tracking a linear progression, you can even have a branching version history where you will have multiple parallel tracks running side by side and allowing you to restore versions of your files from any of them. So to demonstrate this to you, I'm going to go back all the way to version one and restore it, which will also result in that portrait file removed from the project folder. But now I'm going to add a different file into the same folder. And immediately SnowTrack will understand that for this, it will have to create a separate track. So if I decide to save this, now we will have a new yellow branch separating from the previous branch. And SnowTrack does a good job even indicating where the branching out happened. So it was actually here in version one. So the reason why this is a good thing is because even if I decided to go in a certain direction now, if I ever want to go back and revisit the previous direction, which could have even completely different project files, I still have the option to restore and revert back to that. So it is almost like having parallel realities and building your own multiverse for your creative projects. At the time of recording this video, SnowTrack is still in a beta, so I'm not sure how much it's going to cost once it's fully released. But for now, anyone can try it out for free. And I highly recommend it for any creative professionals, not just those who use Adobe tools, but also you can see it supports so many other tools like Cinema 4D, ZBrush, Blender, Affinity, and so on and so forth. You can find the link in the description below if you want to give it a try. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. 
click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.